So when we are talking about classification of optimization problem, it is very important to understand how or what are the different categories of problems are there. And the reason being that the optimization literature has generally you know, created hundreds of different algorithms, uh, which many of which are very, very well suited for a particular type of optimization problem. Okay, so if we understand the classification of optimization problem, then it will help us in picking right algorithm for that specific problem itself. Okay, and this is why knowing what are the different classes of optimization problems are useful. It essentially helps you very quickly pick up right algorithm for that problem. So let's try to understand, you know, what are a simple classification of different types of optimization problems. Okay, so first category is defined based upon existence or non-existence of constraints. Okay, under this, basically your optimization problem can be classified into two different categories. One is essentially uh, your, um, you know, constraint optimization problem where you have objective function and then on top of that you have a set of constraints also with you, okay? So this sort of problem will look like this where you have minimized, you know, a vector for x vector where it is subject to constraint which might be g1 such as like, you know, 2x1 plus, you know, let's say uh, if this is a two variable problem then I can write this equation as, you know, minimize some function x1, x2 with respect to, you know, x1 and x2. And let's say this is the function that we are trying to minimize, right? And the g1 could be 2x1 plus 3x2 is less than or equal to 0. So that's the constraint that it needs to satisfy. It can also have equality constraint where 2x1, 2x1 plus 4 is equal to zero, right? So we can have this sort of constraint on top of objective function, right? So this is the objective function and uh, we also have the constraints functions which are right here. In that setting, this class of problem will be falling into this category known as constraint optimization problem. So here you have objective function and then on top of that you have certain function which might be one, two or even more which defines the constraints on the problem and this type of problem is known as constraint optimization problem. Whereas the second category is essentially the problem where you do not have any constraints. So in that category you will not have any of this G or H equality inequality constraint. You will only have the objective function and there will be no constraints, right? So, or in other words, there might be, you know, constraint on the variables x, you know, which could have some range. x1 could be minus infinity to infinity or zero to infinity, but that's a constraint on the values of the domain of the x itself. But, you know, there is no other constraint that which is meaningfully coming from the formulation of the problem itself. So in that category, if you have just the objective function and no constraints, then your problem will be known as an unconstrained optimization problem. Okay, and this classification is important because, you know, first, um, you know, there are very good algorithms that are, that works really well for unconstrained optimization problems, but you need somewhat more specialized methods or techniques for constrained optimization problem solving. Some of them build upon the initial ways to solve the unconstrained optimization and they modify that to solve the constrained optimization problem. Whereas some techniques are originally just geared for constrained optimization problem. And you know, again, since this is a superset and it also involves this, they typically tend to work also on the unconstrained optimization problem too. So this is one of the popular way of classifying optimization problem in general. Now, in general, a comment, uh, you know, you know, the complexity of the optimization problem could be due to various reasons, but typically, and again, it's not true in all cases, typically constrained optimization problems are a little bit harder compared to unconstrained optimization problem. And what is hardness? I mean, it's hard to define because, you know, unconstrained optimization problem could be also very, very hard to solve, right? Uh, but, you know, generally, uh, the constraint optimization problem is a little bit trickier to solve compared to the unconstrained optimization problem. Okay, the second uh, classification which is also important for us to know is based upon the nature of equations that are involved 
in the objective function and in the constraint function. So there might be different types of uh, functions. For example, the function might be quadratic, the function might be linear, the function might be exponential or geometric and so on. And that leads to different class of optimization problem. And that is the second way of classifying, you know, uh, the optimization problem that we have. Okay. So here we can, you know, uh, classify, I, some of the classification could be, you know, either the problem is linear, right? And we already discussed some of this concept in the previous couple of lectures. So th they could be linear, it could be non-linear, geometric, you know, if the all the, you know, hmm, constraints and the objective function are basically products uh, of polynomials and so on, then it could be, you know, or, you know, in the geometric form, then it, it could be termed as a geometric programming problem. Or if, you know, you, the way I showed the summation notation, if your terms in the optimization problem, either in the objective function or in the constraint, have quadratic equation, then that will be known as quadratic programming problems, right? So the, the objective function is quadratic equation, that will be a quadratic programming problem, and that will be, you know, a different class of problem. Now it turns out, you know, there are very, very good methods for this, each of these class of methods. And that's why it is important for us to know what is the class of problem that I have, right? And, you know, then I can pick those algorithms for those specific class and apply them. Yep. Again, uh, as I said, special methods are available for the effective solution of a particular type of problem. And that's why knowing the different classification is important.